Hello, my name is Cheryl Brunette and thank you for stopping by my knitting channel where you will find tips and techniques, full workshops, and answers to your most perplexing sweater questions. Last episode we worked on cutting your knitting horizontally and grafting it back together. And today we are going to do more grafting work, but before we do that I have a quiz for you and there's only one question on it. Stockinette stitch is one of the most basic of knitted fabrics. It has all knit stitches on the front and it is what most people think of as regular knitting. Now these stockinette stitches are rectangles, not squares. And those rectangles have just about the same proportions as this 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. My question to you is this. As you're looking head-on to a regular piece of knitting, which way do these rectangles go? Which is the wider part of the stitch? Does it go this way or does it go this way? the wider part of the stitch, or is the stitch taller than it is wide? And I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay, how many of you answered vertically that the stitches are tall and narrow? Show your hands, please. Okay, and how many of you think the long end of these stitches run horizontally? Again, a show of hands, please. Obviously, I cannot count your hands. But if you run true to the hundreds of knitters to whom I have posed this question, about 80 to 85% of you will have answered it incorrectly. Now, I'm talking about experienced, highly skilled knitters. And why would they answer this incorrectly? And it's because of the visual clues on this fabric. These little Vs give a vertical pattern effect and they almost look like arrows going up and down. But think of a typical stock and knit gauge, four stitches and five and a half rows per inch for example. There are always more rows than stitches per inch and the stitch is about three quarters high as it is wide. This is an important piece of information to know because there are many implications. This is why for example you need to cast on and bind off loosely. That little short stitch is lying down over its wider neighbor, so it needs to be taller than usual to keep this edge from being too tight. Another place this concept is helpful is when you set a sleeve into an armhole. In this case, you have stitches that come together at right angles. Whoops, see if I get, whoop, there we go. <laughs> If your sleeve is plain stock in it and a drop shoulder style like this one, you really shouldn't have to graft these edges together. You could have picked up along this armhole edge and knit the sleeve down. It's a clean and fast way to attach this style sleeve and that's how this one was done. I showed you how to do that in 1992, but just in case you've forgotten or gotten a little bit rusty on that skill, you can find it right here and review it anytime. But there are times when you really do need to graft them together. You just can't pick up along the armhole edge and knit down. And here's an example of that. The body of this sweater is all stock and knit stitch, but because of this complex color pattern, it looks different going this direction from going that direction. So I knit the body pieces and the sleeves from the bottom up and then grafted them together. And today I'm going to show you this technique how to graft things at 90 degrees to one another. Yes. <laughs> Line up your swatches, and usually if you were doing this, you wouldn't do it in the very end stitch. This would be a sleeve and you would be attaching it somewhere in the middle of that um, body. So find the end stitch at the top of this swatch, come up through the center of it, let me tuck this yarn away so it doesn't get... Let's keep neatness here. Neatness counts. On this side of the work, we are going to be working with the running stitches or the running threads that go between this end column of stitches and this second one. So catch the first column that you want, or running stitch, excuse me. Come back down into the hole you went into, 
up into the center of the next stitch. Again, I'm going to tighten this down a little bit. I'm going to try to match this gauge down here, but we can adjust that a little bit later. Pick up that running stitch. Now remember, we're working with rectangles, so if we picked up one for one, this would end up to be kind of ruffled. The bottom would be too wide to fit into this other top place. So for stitches three and four, we're going to skip every fourth stitch, and we do that by finding the two running stitches, or running threads. Excuse me, I keep calling them running stitches. Running threads between those. Again, come back down into the center, up into the center of the next stitch. You can see that this is starting to shape up. I just did two, so I'm going to combine numbers three and four. Oops, let me get rid of that extra yarn there. Okay, now, look at that. Let me pull it. Because this is a different color, you can see through here a tiny bit, but look at how this looks just like it's a column of stitches going right up into that. Look at that. Very clever, don't you think? And very nice, very handsome finish. Again, you can see it in this sweater. Here is this, very, this is the body, and this is the sleeve coming in, and I grafted it all the way around. Even This had even been steeked. So there you have it, a very elegant join at 90 degrees. In the next episode, we'll look at a not very typical way to graft your knitting pieces together after you've cut them apart. And it is a great technique for doing things like fixing holes or um, adding a cable cross where you forgot to put one in, that sort of thing. So until then, enjoy your knitting. Woohoo, flashing lights. <laughs> well, that's a heck of a note. Here you think you're performing and the Dumb camera's not working because the button didn't work. All right, well, let's just, I guess you're warmed up now. <laughs> let's go back to um, shot one. Ooh, itch your ear. And I have my glasses on the whole time and I'm not supposed to wear the glasses when I'm looking into the camera. So much for that. That was dumb. That's good enough. Total honest reaction. <laughs> okay. okay. Hi, my name is Bo, and I am a brand new knitter. I came to Cheryl's class today, um, and what an awesome launch for a knitting career! It has saved me I, much money and much time, avoiding mistakes that I surely would have made. I learned so much. Thank you.